That's okay. This question then uh, is about uh, a travel graph, and we've got some information here. Uh, Saturday, Sarah, uh, travel graph shows a journey to the gym. So she's leaving her house to the gym. So her house down the bottom here, because that's where she's leaving, and she's going to the gym. So the gym must be here. Um, it says here what time does she leave home? Uh, we've always got to work out the scale of a graph. So when we look along here, we can see that for one hour, there are one, two, three, four, five, six squares. So 60 minutes divided by six, so that's 10 minutes per square. So when we're working out what time she leaves, then she must leave home at this point here. So it's 11, 11, 10, 11, 20. So she leaves home at 11.20. Next part of the question, how far is the gym from Sarah's house? Well, it says that she travels straight from the house to the gym. So she's travelled straight from the house to the gym. So like we pointed out earlier, the gym must be here. So 12 kilometres away from the house, because the scale here is how far she is away from the house as she goes along. So it's going to be 12 kilometres. The next part of the uh, question wants you to use some information to then complete the travel graph. So she stays at the gym for one and a half hours. Well, on a travel graph, if you're staying still, then obviously the distance isn't changing, but time is still moving forward. So that'll create a horizontal line. She's staying for one and a half hours. Well, one and a half hours is the same as 90 minutes. And as the scale of the graph was every square was 10 minutes, then 90 divided by 10 is going to be 9 squares. So we need to be counting 9 squares on from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we know that the part of the journey from the gym staying still is going to be here. We could have um, obviously added on an hour from 12.20, 13.20, and then we could have added on another half hour. You know, different ways of doing it. She then cycles back to the house at 18 kilometres per hour. Well, she's got 12 kilometres to travel, and we've got to do 18. So 18 kilometres per hour would be the same as 6 kilometres every 20 minutes, so a third of an hour, six threes or 18. So if she does six kilometers every 20 minutes, then 12 kilometers is the distance she's got to travel. So that will be 40 minutes later on. So at the moment, she's at this stage, she's leaving the gym here and she's got to travel 40 minutes. So that's another four squares, one, two, three, four. So she's gonna get home at this time here. Again, we complete the graph accurately using our rulers. Now we could have used the formula speed equals distance over time. Uh, we could have then worked out the time as the distance divided by the speed. So we could have done 12 over 18 and that would have given us two thirds of an hour, which again, would have led us to 40 minutes. So there are several ways of uh, tackling this particular part of the question. Um, quite often uh, at GCSE level, there's usually some uh, reasonable connection between the distances and time that you could use, just breaking it down into so many 10 minutes or so many 20 minutes and so forth might be an easier way of doing it. Um, but the formula would have worked just as well. So we've completed the travel graph.